Hello, welcome to Grandma B's Busy Life. I'm Brenda, and today's episode of Slow Down and Drink the Coffee is not happening in the morning. It's actually near bedtime. I'm working out of town this week, and I got up early this morning and got moving. But I'm back to my hotel now, and I'm tired, and I'm wanting to wind down, so I just fixed me a little bit of herbal tea. Hopefully that will help me wind down a little bit. Oh my goodness, it's so good too. But I've been wound up a whole day. Let me back up and tell you what I'm wound up about because I want your opinion on this. What, what should I do? So, in January, no, December 28th, I got a text message saying that um, it was Paul from the dealership and that I needed to bring my car in for it, its update or whatever. And I ignored it because I don't know who Paul is. I bought my car through my son. My son would have messaged me. Anyhow, I ignored it. January 20th, I got a text message that just said, please text me from an Idaho number. Two text messages from an Idaho number. Then, on March 3rd, I got a phone call early in the morning. And this woman said, hey, Courtney, I just wanted to let you know, and I stopped her. I said, oh, I'm sorry, you must have the wrong number. I'm not Courtney. She said, yes, you are, and you need to know. And I said, no, 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 I'm not Courtney. You have the wrong number. There's no Courtney at this number. I've had this number for a very long time. You don't have Courtney. And she said, yeah, you left a note on my car this morning. No, I didn't. <laughs> you have the wrong number. And I just kept insisting because it was true. I had just woken up. And she finally said, okay, whatever. The call ended. I don't think she believed me. I know she didn't believe me. And then, a few minutes later, I get this text message that says, um, if, let me just read it to you. And I apologize for the glare on my glasses when I'm reading it, but I can't read it without my granny glasses. So, that's what you get. If that was you that left the note, there is no Nathan that lives here. And then she sent me a picture of the note. And the note says, I would show it to you, but it has my phone number on it. It says, Nathan, call me. It's important. Then it has my phone number, and then it says, Courtney. So when I woke up, like was really awake, I looked at my phone, and I noticed I had three text messages. One from Google, one from Instagram, and one from Twitter saying, Here's your code to get into Court's account. You know how if you forget your password or whatever, you, you can have a code sent to your phone to get into your account. All for somebody named Court. So when she sent me that picture of that message, I decided I'm changing all my passwords. I changed all my social media, my bank, my um, email, passwords. I changed every password I could think of. And then I sent her a message that said, this is all very weird because I did not leave the note. I have been asleep for nine hours. It's not me. I have three texts with codes to activate Instagram and Facebook for someone named Court. It's not me. I'm not sure where you're located, but I'm in Salt Lake City. I'm sorry, but it's just not me. I knew she didn't believe me, and I was trying to defend myself. She said, okay, thank you for letting me know. And it... It's really frustrating, and I and I t we have this conversation, and I basically say to her that I'm bothered that somebody's trying to use my phone number to get into these social media accounts, and that I and she says, well, I hope you get it figured out. Then that night around eight o'clock, I get a call from her again. And she's irate. And she says, I don't know who you think you are, but you better leave us alone. We're getting the police involved. I was like, what? What are you talking about? And she said, you left a note on my husband's truck at work. Uh, no, I didn't. She said, yeah, your son did. Mm, no, I'm really sorry. I have no idea what you're talking about. First of all, I don't even know who your husband is. And she said, there was a note on my husband's truck that said, your wife called my mom this morning and you better leave her alone or there's going to be legal problems. 
I'm going to call the cops or something like that. And I said, first of all, my son has no idea you called me. I haven't told anybody. And second of all, it's not me. I don't know what you're talking about. She said, well, we're going to look at the video and we're going to catch you and you're going to get caught and we're going to call the police and you're going to pay. I said, I hope you do look at the cameras at his work to see who put the note on his truck. And when you do, I'd like to know. But in the meantime, do you want to video chat with me so that you can see what I look like? Because I'm telling you, it's not me. She didn't believe me. She was so angry, she hung up on me. And then I right away get a phone call from a restricted number. And I answer it because I'm mad at this point. I don't like being accused of things I didn't do. So it's a kid, maybe a late teen, early 20s kid. And he says, hey, Courtney. And I said, I don't know who you think you are or what you're doing or, or why you're calling me. But I'm not Courtney and leave me alone. And I said some bad words. And he hung up very quickly. I immediately texted her and said, look, if you figure out what's going on, I want to know because somebody is, is hacking me through my phone number. And I've, I've gotten text messages and I've gotten, now gotten a restricted call. And she said this. So I sent her that message through text. You know, please let me know what you find out because I'm bothered. And this is what she said to me saying, you know, I'm, I, all this is happening to me and I'm, I'm going to do something. She said, someone is hacking you, report it. And I said I was going to. I said, they are going to great lengths to mess with both of us. They obviously know where your husband works. And she said, yeah, that really bothered her, too. And then about 10 minutes later, she texts me and says, the one on his truck at work was his work buddies. Still don't know how the one at our house happened. His work buddies did the ones because he told them about the note we found this morning. I get that. Guys are funny. They, they prank each other all the time. Okay, fine. But... And it's a little bit of a relief that whoever has my phone number isn't after her, too. Whatever. She said, I'm sorry for bothering you. And I said, yeah, but I just got a restricted call. And someone looking for Courtney. And I'm definitely going to the police. And I'm going to report that I'm being hacked. And I want that phone number, the restricted number, tracked. And she said... I would just change your passwords and accounts. As far as the call, I wouldn't stress too much. Do you know why? It was probably her calling. It was probably her son calling for her. I don't know. And I said, my phone provider may be able to tell where it came from, and I can get help from the police. She said, well, again, I'm sorry for bothering you and hope you get your accounts figured out. But again, I wouldn't worry about the call. <laughs> gets weirder. A couple days later I got a text message from H&R Block in Idaho saying that Courtney's appointment was at noon on March 6th or something like that. And then a couple days later I got a phone call from a doctor's office asking for Courtney that they had her test results. And I said, I'm not Courtney and this is not Courtney's number. And she said, oh, this is the number Courtney gave us. And I said, when, did, when was Courtney in there? Because you know, did you actually see Courtney? And she said, yeah, Courtney was here yesterday. And she gave us this number. I'm like, well, I'm not Courtney. Uh, I should have pretended to be Courtney and get her test results, right? But I don't care about Courtney's test results. So she's giving her number, my number, out to a lot of people. A couple days ago, another strand of Google, Instagram, and Facebook messages, not messages, um, text messages saying here's Court's code to set up your account. And then last night I got a text message from an Idaho number that says please text me. What? I, what's going on? I don't know what to do. Do I really? Should I go to the police? It seems silly. It's just a phone number, right? And I've had the same phone number for 10 years. I don't know who Courtney is and why she's giving my number out, but 
She's definitely trying to set up accounts with using my phone number. I don't know. I don't know what to do. So what do you think? Because... <laughs> I don't know! I don't know. I don't know. Here's what I do know. I need to wind down so I can sleep tonight. I would love to hear your opinion. What do you think? What do you think happened? What do you think I should do? Who's Courtney? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments. Have a great day. I'll see you again soon.